Andrew McGahan for Severe MMA, standing alongside Peter Creeley. Peter, I have to say, a completely different you from the last time I saw you fight. What's right. happened? Uh, welterweight happened. Just I am. Um, I don't want to take anything away from Chris Bougerard. He beat me in that night, and that was that. But I am. Um, that wasn't me, shall I say? And uh, this is me at welterweight. I don't have to cut as much weight. I'm walking around about 80 kilos, and I don't have to do anything to make weight. It's just Joe changed my diet slightly in the last few days, and I make weight, and I just never get tired. To be that's the greatest weapon you can bring into a fight. It's just a never-ending gas tank, and that's that's what's mo what I have. And no one's going to beat me at this weight. To be honest, ignorance on my part. I thought. Um, <coughs> there was going to be too much of a size difference because Conrad has fought it uh, up in the 80s before and you usually fight down at 70. Yeah. Um, and I also noticed much improved grappling. Do you think that was something that let you down in the Bouchard fight and prompted no, maybe more focus? Chris never got me down. You were at that fight. I never went to the ground. What he did do was hold me on the fence for, for 15 minutes and he did that well and he got a decision. I, I actually... I still think I could. I rocked him. I nearly knocked him out in the second round. I thought I still could have won that fight. But he did win. And it wasn't grappling. It was just that I, I dropped after three minutes. And I just I just couldn't get him off me. I just couldn't do anything. This fight, he had, did the same thing. They're always going to do that, those grapplers. They're going to get your back and have you on the fence. But I knew I would escape. And the minute I escaped, I could see him. He, he was toast. He was done. I knew there, there was nothing left. Then just take over. Two quick things before we let you go. One thing in particular. Uh, beautiful, beautiful. It was like a right uppercut to the body that kept landing, finding a home. Was yeah. that a like a money move that you've been doing yeah, in training? Yeah, I'll give give me his dues. Dylan Chuk, he's an amateur we have in the gym. Actually, showed me that shot about two weeks ago, and I've just been increasing guys with it ever since. And and that's where I got that out of. He's a great little boxer, and he showed me, and it worked well. I knew Conor would be diving in all the time, so it was the perfect shot. Just keep showing him that. It would keep him upright. I could start working his legs and things then. And, and it did keep him upright. I, I felt like I heard him a few times with it, and it kept him standing up straight then. Yeah. And one final thing before I let you go, aside from looking like Cahill Pendred's little brother, it also <laughs> seemed like Conrad's wrestling uh, mirrored the style almost that Cahill probably would have put on you in yeah. the gym. Was that another factor? Yeah, well, I, I, I train with Cahill every day, and he's the biggest, baddest welterweight that was ever in cage wearers. And, you know, I, that's it. I just I have him on my back all day long, every day, and it never gets worse than that. So that was just a picnic compared to him. So... Excellent, Peter. We appreciate the time. Thank you. Looking so forward to seeing you soon.